The urinary system. Introduction. The urinary system is one of the major systems of the body. It is a collective part of the body that is responsible for urinary waste elimination, also known as the excretory or renal system. The system is effortless for our bodies, but entails an extremely complex makeup of body parts. Function of the urinary system Filters nitrogenous waste from the urine. About 200 quarts of our blood are filtered every day to form two quarts of urine. It maintains balance of water, electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and acids. It releases hormones like renin and erythropoietin. Renin is an enzymatic hormone important in adjusting blood pressure. Erythropoietin or EPO is a hormone that stimulates red blood cell production in the bone marrow. Calciferol is active form of vitamin D needed to absorption of calcium from the intestines. Degrade and eliminate hormones from the bloodstream. Now we'll discuss the organs and structures of the urinary system. The organs of the urinary systems are the kidneys, ureters, urinary bladder, and urethra. Urinary anatomical position. The urinary system is anatomically located in the dorsal body wall in a retroperitoneal position beneath the parietal peritoneum in the superior human region. Anatomical position continued. The ureters run behind the peritoneum to the posterior aspect of the bladder. The urinary bladder is retroperitoneally in the pelvis just posterior to the pubic symphysis. The urethra lies anteriorly to the vaginal opening in women. The urethra in males is both the urinary and reproductive systems. Now we're going into cells and tissues. Cells and tissues in the urinary system. Kidneys are encased in layers of fibrous tissue and fat. The functional units of the kidneys are made of simple epithelial tissue. The ureters contain a lining that is stratified transitional epithelium. The stratified transitional epithelium of the bladder stretches and can look like stratified squamous epithelium. The urethra is lined by stratified columnar epithelium with a few mucosal glands. Here you can see more cells and tissues in the bladder. You see the transitional epithelium on the outer part, the lamina purpurea in the middle, and then the submucosa in the inner lining of the bladder. Function of the kidney per se. Kidneys have several functions. Excretion, elimination of water-soluble metabolic waste and foreign substances as urine. Regulation, maintain an appropriate fluid volume and concentrations of various electrolytes in the body fluids, maintain normal blood pressure, and maintain the pH of blood. Endocrine, secretion of hormones like renin, which is in charge of regulation of blood pressure. Erythropoietin, it stimulates production of red blood cells, and vitamin D, regulation of calcium level. Kidney location, the kidneys are paired organs located lateral to the vertebral column between T12 and L3. The kidney is about 5 inches 12 centimeters long, 2.5 inches or 6 centimeters wide, and 1 inch 
about three centimeters thick. There is a deep indentation called the helius on the medial side of each kidney from which the uterus and blood vessels enter and leave. The helius leads to a space within the kidney called the renal sinus. Right kidney is slightly higher than the left and they are protected by the ribs. The kidneys are retroperitoneal in position and are held in position and supported by the following layers of connective tissue. Renal capsule, a layer of dense connective tissue on the outer surface of each kidney. Adipose capsule, a layer of adipose tissue surrounding the renal capsule that protects and supports the kidney. Renal fascia, a dense outer layer of connective tissue that anchors the kidney to surrounding structures. Sectional anatomy. Longitudinal cut through the kidney reveals the following features. Cortex, an outer layer of kidney in contact with the capsule. Medulla is the tissue internal to the cortex that has the following features. Renal pyramids, conical in three dimensions or triangular in cut section, structures with the base lying against the cortex and the tip called the renal papilla pointing in the renal sinus. Renal columns, this is a cortica tissue extending between the renal pyramids. Sectional anatomy continued. Within the renal sinus, the renal papilla of each is surrounded by a minor calyx that drains the urine that drips from the papilla. The minor calyces fuse to form a funnel-shaped renal pelvis. The renal pelvis tapers to form the ureter. Nephron. Each kidney contains over a million blind-ended tubules called nephrons. Each nephron consists of the following parts. Cortical nephron, fibrous capsule, collecting duct, proximal convoluted tubule, glomerulus, distal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle. The nephrons perform their functions of filtration, reabsorption, and secretion because of their precise association with the blood vessels that enter the kidney. Glomerular Bowman's capsule. This is the blind end of the tube that is indented by a tuft of capillaries called glomerulus. Blood enters the capillaries through an afferent arteriole and blood drains from the capillaries through an efferent arteriole. The location where the arterioles enter and leave the capsule is the vascular pole. The capsule is lined on the outside and inside by the following epithelia. Capsular epithelium. This is the outer wall of the capsule and consists of simple squamous epithelium. Glomerular epithelium. The cells that form the epithelium rest directly on the capillaries of the glomerulus and consist of octopus-shaped cells called podocytes. Glomerular Bowman's capsule. The process of filtration occurs in the glomerular capsule. The blood that enters the glomerulus is filtered across three physical barriers. First is the capillary endothelium. The glomerular capillaries are porous. Second is the lamina densa. This is the extracellular material that supports both the capillary endothelium and the glomerular epithelium. Third is the glomerular epithelium. The podocytes that form these epithelium have processes called foot processes. The foot processes have smaller processes called pedicels that interdigitate with one another. The space between the interdigitating pedicels form filtration slits through which the filtrate passes. Proximal convoluted tubule. The glomerular capsule of the tubular pole continues as the proximal convoluted tubule or PCT. 
The PCT consists of simple cuboidal epithelium, whose apical surface is lined by microvilli. The PCT is the mass absorber. The bulk of the water, ions, organic nutrients, any protein, is reabsorbed in this pigment tubule. Loop of Henle. The PCT or proximal convoluted tubule straightens out and forms the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle has a descending limb which is directed toward the tip of the pyramid, makes a hairpin turn, and then becomes an ascending limb that parallels the descending limb. The loop of Henle creates an osmotic gradient within the medulla that enables the kidney to reabsorb water and produces a urine that is more concentrated than the body fluids. The loop of Henle also reabsorbs about 25% of the water and continues to reabsorb ions. Distal convoluted tube. When the ascending limb of the loop of Henle returns to the cortex, it becomes the distal convoluted tubule or DCT. The DCT is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium that has fewer microvilli. The DCT further refines the filtrate by continuing to reabsorb ions, but also by secreting ions including H plus or hydrogen and K plus potassium. Collecting ducts. The nephrons are connected to the collecting ducts by connecting tubules. The collecting ducts descend into the medulla and converge on the papilla. As the collecting ducts converge at the papilla, they fuse to form larger ducts that are called papillary ducts. Blood supply to kidneys. The renal artery brings blood to the kidney and enters the kidney through the helius. Within the renal sinus, the renal artery branches into segmental arteries. The segmental arteries enter the medulla through the renal columns where the arteries are called the interlobar arteries. The interlobar arteries travel along the bases of the pyramids where they are called the arcuate arteries. The arcuate arteries give off branches that ascend in the cortex called cortical radiate arteries. Blood supplies to kidneys continued. The afferent arterioles branch off the cortical radiate arteries or interlobular arteries and bring blood to the glomerulus. Blood drains from the glomerulus by the afferent arteriole. The afferent arterioles form peritubular capillaries that wrap around the tubules of the nephrons. Blood drains from the kidneys by way of veins that reverse the direction of blood flow into the kidneys in the arteries. Hence, blood drains through the cortical radiate vein or interlobular vein, then accurate vein, interlobular vein, segmental vein, and renal vein. Physiology How kidneys produce urine Blood enters each kidney from the aorta by way of the right and left renal arteries. The renal artery enters the kidney at the helium, then branches into smaller and smaller arteries. The smallest artery is called arterioles. They are located throughout the cortex of the kidney. Blood constantly flows through the kidneys. If blood pressure falls in the vessels of the kidney, which diminishes blood flow, the kidney produces renin and discharges this into the blood. Renin promotes the formation of a substance that stimulates the contraction of arterioles. This increases blood pressure and restores blood flow in the kidneys to normal. Ureter location. The ureter is situated just lateral to the tips of the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae. Urologists divide the ureter beyond the uroteropelvic junction or PUJ arbitrarily into the proximal, middle, and distal part. 
According to the International Anatomical Terminology, the ureters consists of the abdominal, the pelvic, and the intramural segment. Ureters continued. Ureters are passageways that carry urine from the kidneys to the bladder. Smooth muscles layers in their walls contract to propel urine into the bladder by peristalsis. One of the tubular muscular slender tubes is 25 to 30 centimeters or 16 to 18 inches long, 6 millimeters or a quarter inch in diameter each. Lined with mucous membranes, they carry urine in peristaltic waves from kidneys to the urinary bladder. Ureters continued. Each ureter runs behind the peritoneum from the renal helium to the posterior aspect of the bladder, which enters at a slight angle. Superior end of ureter is continuous with the pelvic of the kidney. Its mucosal lining is continuous with that lining, the renal pelvis, and the bladder below. Like the bladder, it is lined with transitional epithelium or urothelium. Once urine enters the bladder, it is prevented from flowing back into the uterus by small wave-like folds of bladder mucosa that flap over the ureter openings. Urinary bladder is a hollow, smooth, collapsible muscular sac located retroperitoneally in the pelvis, posterior to the pubic symphysis. Temporary Reservoir for urine. Trigone is a triangular region at the base of the bladder where the ureters enter and the urethra exits. Urinary bladder continued. Has three openings. Two ureter openings or urethral orifices. One single opening, urethra internal urethral orifice that drains to the bladder. Again, a trigone, which is a smooth triangular region of bladder base. Infections persist in this region. Urethra is a thin membranous tube that carries urine from the urinary bladder by peristalsis to the outside of the body. Number one, internal urethral sphincter is located at the bladder junction. It's the term for the thickening of smooth muscle. And number two, we have external urethral sphincter. It's formed by skeletal muscle as urethra passes through the pelvic floor. Interactions of the urinary system and the cardiovascular system. Both the cardiovascular and urinary system must work together in order to maintain a homeostatic state. As the cardiovascular system delivers oxygenated blood to the urinary system, the blood moves through the urinary system. The kidneys work to remove toxins, balance water volume, and regulate hormones. When the urinary has completed this cycle, the blood is once more ready to be circulated by the cardiovascular system throughout the entire body and cells. Urinary and cardiovascular system interactions. The health and life of the human body is dependent on the homeostasis of urinary and cardiovascular system. If the cardiovascular system no longer delivers oxygenated blood to the urinary system, and if the urinary system did not cleanse the blood of toxic substances, it will result to bodily system failure and terminal death. Common medical diseases, illnesses, disorders of the urinary system. Urinary tract infections, kidney infection, kidney stones, chronic kidney disease, hematuria, cancers of the urinary tract,
incontinence or inability control urine flow, interstitial cystitis, and kidney failure. Common symptoms of urinary disorders, abdominal pain, pelvic pain, lower back pain or discomfort, blood in the urine, changes in the urine, difficulty producing urine, fever and chills, frequent urination, leaking of urine, urgent need to urinate. Some urinary disorders such as infections may develop quickly while others such as cancer can develop more slowly. Urinary tract infection, the most common urinary infection is a urinary tract infection or a UTI. The symptoms of a UTI are the results of the bladder and urethra lining becoming inflamed and irritated from the infection. Burning, stinging, pain or cramping with urination. Cloudy, bloody or foul smelling urine. Feeling like your bladder doesn't fully empty after you urinate. Frequent urge to urinate, but not much urine comes out. A leaking urine. Pressure or pain in your pelvic area or lower belly. Hydronephrosis caused by kidney stone or obstruction in proximal part of the ureter. Notice the buildup of excess fluid in the kidney. Hydroureter with Hydronephrosis caused by a stone in distal part of the ureter where it's stuck and obstructed there. Kidney stones. Kidney stones are small pieces of hard crystallized material that form in the kidney. Kidney stones are often made up of calcium but can also contain uric acid or amino acid proteins. Kidney stones, also called urolithiasis, are a common condition. One or more kidney stones can form in one or both kidneys. Kidney stones begin as tiny specks and may gradually increase in size. In some cases, small stones in the urine may pass out of the kidney and move down the ureter into the bladder and out of the body without causing pain or serious problems. On occasion, a kidney stone can get stuck in a ureter and result in potentially serious, even life-threatening complications such as kidney infection and kidney damage. Polycystic kidney disease multiple fluid filled sacs within and on the kidney. This hereditary condition usually remains asymptomatic, meaning without symptoms, until adult life. This progressively develop in both kidneys, leading to nephromegaly, hematuria, urinary tract infection, hypertension, and uremia. The kidneys contain masses of cysts, typically polycystic kidneys weigh 20 times more than their usual weight, 150 to 200 grams to be exact. Renal carcinoma, hypernephroma, cancerous tumor of the kidney in adulthood. This tumor accounts for 2% of all cancers in adults. Hematuria or blood in the urine is the primary abnormal finding and the tumor often metastasizes to bones and lungs. Likelihood of survival depends on the extent of spread of the tumor. Nephrectomy is a treatment choice. There are now effective treatments using anti-angiogenic drugs that block the growth of new blood vessels. Symptoms that might indicate a serious condition. Kidney stones can be extremely painful and lead to serious complications, such as kidney infection and kidney damage. 
seek immediate medical care or call 911 if you or someone you are with have any symptoms of passing a kidney stone. That means blood or pink colored urine, hematuria, dark or tea colored urine, difficult urination or lack of urination, irritability, nausea and vomiting, restlessness, severe flank pain that can move or radiate to the lower abdomen, groin, labia, or testicles, sweating. Fun facts about the urinary system. Did you know that each kidney has about 1 million filtering units called nephrons? That every 45 minutes your whole blood supply passes through your kidneys? And roughly 40 gallons of blood in women and 48 gallons of blood in men are filtered each day? The color of your urine can reflect if you're drinking enough water. It usually is light yellow if you're drinking enough water and dark yellow if you're not. And did you know that for someone with kidney failure, it typically takes four hours of dialysis three times a week to perform the filtering duties of normal kidneys? And did you know that the need to urinate is felt when about one cup of urine fills the bladder? <laughs>